Have you or a loved one recently been arrested for a serious crime? Is your professional reputation at risk? Aggressive representation from a qualified defense attorney can help you avoid conviction and keep your reputation untarnished. Hi, I'm Charles McGill, and I'll fight for your rights. With extensive experience in successfully defending against a wide range of criminal offenses and high-profile cases, you can rest assured that you'll get the fair trial you deserve from McGill Guzman McGill. Call us at 559-255-3425 or visit us online at toplawyersfresno.com. Hi, I'm John Malice. Welcome to this live edition of Connect With Me on the showroom floor at Ventura TV on this Thursday morning. Glad you are here. We have a Hollywood star in the building today. That's male, right. Male, male starlet. A, yes, a male starlet. Okay. Thank you very much. You will recognize the face, the voice, and when we show you a clip, you'll immediately know who this is. 436 Me TV, option 11. You call in, you get the recording, hit option 11, and we'll put you in. Today's program is sponsored by Charles Chuck McGill. He's an attorney at law has been practicing for more than a quarter century. Back in a moment. Back here on the program, showroom floor at Ventura TV. Glad you're here. You're watching us live as usual every Monday through Friday on Comcast Channel 375. And if you're over the air broadcast with one of those antennas that we sell over there, it's 13.1 and 43.6. I'm glad you're here for the full hour. Hey, let me give you just a little, little bit of a tidbit of, on what's going on tomorrow. We've got Henry Perea in, in the house. He's one of two candidates running for Fresno mayor, as you know. A very combative race against Lee Brand. The following week, Lee Brand is going to be in here. So we have a barn burn of a show tomorrow. You can ask uh, Henry Perea anything that you want from the baseball stadium downtown to that water disaster in northeast Fresno that's going on. There is a lot going on in the city of Fresno, so Henry is going to be here. Then on Monday, a tape program. I won't be here because I'll, I'll be playing, yes, I'll be playing in a charity golf tournament. I was asked to play in this by Shriners Hospital. As you know, my daughter had surgery at Shriners Hospital. It's one of the best hospitals around the country, and so I'll be playing in that uh, great charity event, uh, money raised for Shriners Hospital. So we did a tape program with Kopi. That'll be airing on our Monday program. Let's get right to today's program, 436 Me TV Option 11, if you want to call in. And I want to put a picture up on the screen and see if you recognize this actor from Hollywood. Tell you what, he's a star. There it is right there. Do you, do you know who ago, this is? A long time ago. Yeah, I know, but they still know who you are. Look at that face. Look at the hair. Look at the eyebrows. Look at the, look at the attire. Do you recognize who that is? He's an actor. He's a stand-up comic. He's a cartoon voice actor, but he is best known for his role as Private Duke Slater in Gomer Pyle, USMC, which, by the way, you can watch right here on MeTV every Monday through Friday. Roll the videotape and take it. Gomer Pyle, USMC. Starring Jim Neighbors as Gomer Pyle. Also starring Frank Sutton as Sergeant Carter. you might like you. Over at the Alhambra Theater, they're playing The Curse of the Tattooed Mummy and The Witch Doctor's Revenge. Says it's blood curdling and bone chilling. A shriek a minute recommended for sophisticated mature audiences. I don't think so, Gomer. Well, over at the Vista Theater, they're having a Rochelle Hudson Festival. Gomer, give me that newspaper. Boy, if there's anything I hate, it's an unplanned Saturday night. Well, if you don't want to go to the picture show, do you? What the? I don't know. Let's go to the Jade Club and have something to drink. Well... What's the matter? Don't you like the Jade Club? It's not bad. It's just that that waitress always looks at me funny when I order a Shirley Temple on the raw. <laughs> Come on. Look, Duke, they're doing it again. They're having amateur night. Yeah. 
Do you remember the night you won first prize for doing that imitation of Sergeant Carter? Sure do. Do it again, do, Sergeant Carter. I hadn't seen you do that since that night. Come on, Gomer. Oh, come on, Dick, please, just a little. Well, okay. All right, pile, you lame brain, you nitwit, you knucklehead. When I give you an order, I give you an order. Is that clear? I can't hear you. <laughs> Go on, how you do, Zaya. Well, what do you say? We going in? Why not? You may win first prize again. Oh, no, no, no. I don't want to do that again. Oh, come on, do you please? Homer, forget it. Now, if we're going in, let's go. Come on. Down to double. Move it, move it. Oh, my goodness. It's hard to stop laughing. Live in our studio right now is the one and only Ronnie Shell. I haven't aged that much, have I? No, no you haven't. Uh, Private Duke Slater from... <laughs> no, you look the same. You look exactly well, the, the same. Well, the hair turned white. Uh, <laughs> you're welcome to call in on our show. He's a first-time guest. I'm so glad he's here because he's part of the MeTV family, part of Gomer Pyle, and, of course, we carry the Andy Griffith Show and many other classic television shows here on MeTV 13.1 and 43.6. And by the way, you can watch Gomer Pyle USMC every Monday through Friday at 5 a.m. and again at 5.30. So it's back uh, I, to back. I don't like the time. Well, I, I don't. I'm sleeping at, at that time. I know, though. but I don't control that. Okay. It, 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 it's just my job is to come out here and oh, just talk and act I'll like I know what boss. I'm talking I'll talk about. I'll talk to your boss. <laughs> All right. 436 Me TV Option 11. We're back after this from our sponsor, Charles Chuck McGill. He's an attorney at law. Have you or a loved one recently been arrested for a serious crime? Is your professional reputation at risk? Aggressive representation from a qualified defense attorney can help you avoid conviction and keep your reputation untarnished. Hi, I'm Charles McGill, and I'll fight for your rights. With extensive experience in successfully defending against a wide range of criminal offenses and high-profile cases, you can rest assured that you'll get the fair trial you deserve from McGill Guzman McGill. Call us at 559-255-3425 or visit us online at toplawyersfresno.com. The Justice Network is here. If you haven't tuned in, you're missing a great lineup of gripping stories of real crime, plus an unprecedented effort by viewers like you to play an active role in making your community safer. You can help support law enforcement by providing information that may lead to the apprehension of dangerous criminals or find a missing child. Great shows and your chance to fight crime, only on the Justice Network. Glad you're along here on the program, 436, Me TV Option 11. If you do have a question, uh, call into our guest. And, and, you know, one of the fun things about doing this show, and it has been for the last uh, four and a half years, is the various people that I'm able to meet, even the politicians. Yes, I enjoy <laughs> meeting and talking to them, but we don't have a politician in the house today. But it is an honor and a pleasure. And I hate to say this, I don't mean to date you, but I did watch you as a kid on television, on Gomer Pyle, Andy Griffith, yeah. and uh, it's, you know, it really is my, here, it's my pleasure to meet you, sir. It I'm, really is. I'm still above the grass. <laughs> You're okay. Still working. Oh, <laughs> yes. that reminds me, one of the reasons I'm here, other than to meet you, is to announce that I'm doing a big show at the... Uh, <laughs> What's the name of the theater? Bullard, Bullard uh, High School Theater. Bull Bullard High School Theater in Fresno on Sunday afternoon. Sunday afternoon, not at 5 a.m. in the morning, but Sunday afternoon at 4 o'clock. Right, on October the 9th. On October the 9th. I'm doing the Broadway play, two, uh, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 1.30. One, oh, it's a 1.30? 1.30. 1.30. Okay. Uh, that'll be Sunday, October 9th. Yeah. And it's uh, Love Letters, the Broadway play play which i've done three or four times and uh, i'll be doing it with it's a two-person play i'll be doing it with maggie peterson who played charlene darling on the andy griffith show and uh, then after that we're going to do a little variety show i do a vegas show twice a year in vegas and i'll do some of that and then maggie will sing and i i would hope that uh, everybody in the area will come up to uh, fresno and uh, come to the to the theater that, that, that Sunday afternoon and see our show. Well, here are uh, tickets. I have four tickets here. I'm going to give two away. This is a pair right here. It's called Love Letters. Uh, these are complimentary tickets. Uh, first uh, uh, oh, person like to them. call in. You like, you like the tickets? Very good, you seen don't the tickets you think? Yeah, very nice. Very well done. Our friend Ron Martini in there made these did tickets. did a good job, Ron. And uh, he um, was able to uh, just uh, 
create these on his computer yeah. and print them out. Yeah. I, I don't know how he does that. Mm -hmm. Anyway, no, not really. But <laughs> 436, Me TV option 11, call in. Uh, the first two callers will get a pair of tickets to Love Letters starring Ronnie Shell here October the 9th. Maggie Peterson. The, and Maggie Peterson at the Bullard High School Theater. October the 9th starts at 1.30. And so, you know, you probably get this all the time. You're probably tired of hearing this, but maybe not because you look back on your career and you're best known for Duke Slater, the private right. on... And then, you, and then you left the show and came back. Yeah, well, what happened was uh, on the third year... I was on a regular for th in the three, first three years, and then I decided that I didn't need Gomer Pyle anymore. So the fourth year, I went and starred in a television show with Goldie Hawn called Good Morning World about radio disc jockeys. Uh -huh. And the fifth year, I was on Gomer Pyle again. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? <laughs> well, my show, <laughs> Good Morning World, was on opposite uh, uh, Friday night at the movies on NBC. Oh. So everybody in America would say, who should we watch tonight, Ronnie Schell or Cary Grant? And our ratings were, of course, Cary Grant. So they canceled us, and so uh, I had an opening, and I went back to Gomer Pyle. I felt wow. good about it. Amazing. Well, let me ask you something. You worked for so many years with uh, Jim Neighbors. Yeah. Um, in nightclubs, too. In, in nightclubs, too. Give us, for those that never met him, like myself, didn't get a chance to know him or talk to him, um, give us a sense of the person, uh, the friendship you had with him, uh, the working relationship you had with him. Well, uh, he la if he were here, he'd tell you that he raised me because he was older than me and I was single most of the time and he, no, you can't go out with that girl, she's trashy. No, 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 she's, she's easy. Because <laughs> he, was, he was a strict Catholic, he is a strict Catholic. Yeah. And uh, very um, morally good and a wonderful guy great voice and uh, he was like a brother older brother to me um, and then as you know he got married just a couple of years ago yeah I think it was yeah, yeah. I think that's what I read but yeah to a, uh, yeah another guy but yeah. that didn't bother me he was like a brother and we were just close yeah, and this French French, do, and do you still talk to him? Yes, I, he 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 owns the largest macadamia nut farm in Maui. Okay. In fact, he just gave his farm to the, the state of Hawaii, and they're going to uh, let him live there till he dies, and that's going to be a public park. Amazing! I did yeah. not know that. Well, he's worth about forty-six big ones. Wow, forty-six million. Yeah, you wow. see, he he was very wise. He when he. Did Gomer Pyle? He invested a lot of big invest. He was the largest single investor in Harris at the time. Harris, you know, hotels. Right. And he was also a, a, a big investor in IB, IBM. I think it was IBM or NBC. I'm not sure which. And so he was, he was well taken care of. Yeah. He. So he, you know, he had he had uh, the vision uh, and the foresight to go ahead and secure his financial future. Absolutely, and he also owned part of Gomer Pyle. Okay. Which he sold, I think I think, when the show was over, they sold it for $4 million, but in those days, $4 million was worth about 30, you know? Yeah, in today's, in today's yeah. market, it's probably yeah. worth that. And yeah, he didn't give me a darn cent. He didn't give you a dime? No, but he did invite me to dinner several times, so I got to meet his showbiz buddies and friends. And yeah, but, but did he make you pay for dinner? I just curious I when we were on the road <laughs> <laughs> but was that the most enjoyable experience for you as Gomer Pyle because I mean look you 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 uh, you work with uh, Frank Sutton right Love Sergeant me. Carter another great and he passed away I think 1974 recently. yeah he passed away heart attack yeah yeah and uh, and, and how would you describe him uh, type a Really? Even in person, huh? Just he off smoked, camera? He smoked about 19 Brazilian cigars every day and drank 23 cups of black coffee. He was a very tense, tense guy. So uh, he was due for a heart attack, and he had it at 50 in Shreveport, Louisiana, where he was doing a play, and uh, that's how he ended. But uh, he was a good guy, great actor. He had been on Broadway uh, doing some shows, uh, some serious plays, and... Uh, we got along very well. 
very well. Yeah, I'm just, you know. Um, you asked a question though that uh, that uh, uh, got me thinking. You said, was that the most uh, fun you had in show business? The only way I can answer that is yes, but I was a lot younger and it was easier. Did, did you realize how special that program was at such a young age? Yes, because we were, uh, uh, very pe few people know this, but we were always in the top five ahead of the Andy Griffith Show in the ratings for five years. So, and those were national ratings. National ratings, always yeah. in the. You, if you look in the it top up, five, yeah. in the top five, in the Nielsen ratings. So, we, it, the show was worldwide popular. In uh, in Los Angeles, this is just a showbiz thing, uh, because we were a rural show. You know, small town and everything. It wasn't that popular. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Everywhere else, you know, you'd go to St. Louis. Everybody knew you. I know you're complaining about the time about Gomer piling on at uh, 5 a.m. and yeah, I don't like that. But but Andy Griffith, we carry that show too, and you were on there. We carry that every Monday through Friday, eight o'clock, and again at 8:30 at night, so prime time. Good. Well, you know, so keep you were running on there too. Keep running my episodes. Keep running. Uh, uh, By the way, back I, to back. Oh, yeah. good. I know. Yeah. We we do it in L.A. too on uh, on on Me TV. Yeah. I was noticing, if you don't mind me saying, Go ahead. some of the shows that you run that I've been on. I did three emergencies. I did two Andy Griffiths. I did two Carol Burnett shows. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not bragging, but I did a love no. boat. I did a love boat. I did two happy days. I, I, I was on Saved by the Bell. I played Stinky the Principal. I was on <laughs> Sledgehammer. I was, I was on a lot. Yeah. I'm probably helping to finance your job. Saved by the Bell. Saved Mario by the Bell. Mario Lopez. Oh yeah, he was a, he was a kid. Now. He was a kid. Yeah, yeah. And how about the? I can't think of uh, his name. The guy who played uh, young kid. Oh, that guy got in trouble for some reason. Still is. Still, still is in trouble. Still is. Yeah. yeah, I forgot that. What's that kid's name? Uh, uh, Screech. 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 We played. Right. We, we played yeah. Las Vegas together afterwards. You he had a did? nightclub act. Yeah, I don't know what kind of problems he's having or had or you know, whatever. You know, I don't know why. I don't know why. Well, you know. He was okay when I worked with him. We all have certain issues, don't we, that we, we deal with? We do, we do. Yeah. That's, I have mine, but. Well, that's why I've been in therapy for 52 <laughs> years, but that's another question. I've got uh, tickets here to uh, Love Letters. It's a play, and um, this is going to start starring Ronnie Shell and. Uh, Maggie Peterson. Ma Maggie Peterson, I should write that Andy down. Griffith Show. Hello. Uh, October the 9th at the Bullard High School Theater. Two free tickets, 436 Me TV, option 11. I have two more here. And it's my return to Fresno because... You played here before. I played here way back. There used to be an, a club on Highway 99 uh, called the... Uh, uh, Hacienda? Hacienda. Yeah. And I played there twice, a month at a time. And then I played uh, 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 your auditorium with Memorial. Bobby, yeah. Bo yeah, with Bobby Goldsboro, we had it in. I opened for him, yeah. and uh, so this is my return. Wow! Hey, I still want to hear you do Sergeant Carter before we go today. Four, three, six, Me TV, Option Eleven. Charles Chuck McGill, the sponsor. Back in just a moment. Have you or a loved one recently been arrested for a serious crime? Is your professional reputation at risk? Aggressive representation from a qualified defense attorney can help you avoid conviction and keep your reputation untarnished. Hi, I'm Charles McGill. And I'll fight for your rights. With extensive experience in successfully defending against a wide range of criminal offenses and high profile cases, you can rest assured that you'll get the fair trial you deserve from McGill Guzman McGill. Call us at 559 255 3425 or visit us online at toplawyersfresno.com. Not sure what you're watching? Want to see what's coming up next? Or just want to browse what's on without the hassle of flipping channels? Your wish has come true. Now you can view schedules for all the digital TV channels available in the Central Valley. Get local weather updates and forecasts, and listen to nationally syndicated Biz Talk Radio, all on KVHF 4.1. Rescan your TV now, then tune in to Digital Channel 4.1 to start enjoying the all-new TV guide. Well, we just had a call, and she apparently did not want to wait during uh, the break. But anyway, call back at 436-ME-TV, option 11. In the meantime, let's run another piece of videotape from 
the um, show called Gomer Pyle, USMC, from back to in the uh, 1960s. Ronnie Shell and Gomer Pyle, of course, uh, Jim Neighbors. And I think this is the, one of the episodes where Gomer met this Hollywood star and Ronnie Shell, uh, Duke Slater, on the program, did not want to believe him. Check out this scene. It's pretty, it's hilarious. Check it out. I don't remember that. Gomer, what are you going to do? I'm going to take the sergeant's car and deliver those things to the rummage sale. Gomer, no. It was for a good cause to you. And Sergeant Carter did promise Miss Bunny, and she's his best girl, and he wouldn't want her mad at him. I know in a case like this, he'd want me to drive his car. Drive it, Gomer. He won't even let you wash it. <laughs> no, Gomer, wait a minute. You're not serious this time. Uh, oh, no, this is the craziest thing you've ever done. You can't be serious. Think, Gomer, think. This is the sergeant's car. You're taking his car in without his permission. But, dear, I'm doing it for him. I'm not just taking this car for my own pleasure. Now, stop worrying. Well, I am worried. This is the way it always starts. Somebody gets into trouble, you've got to help them. Mr. Fix-It, you always got to go around helping Boy, people. Boy, she sure got a lot of nice donations, didn't she? Look Gomer. at that. Candlestick and silverware and teapot. Gomer, listen to me. Please don't do it. Please do not take the car. You'll see, Duke. When Sergeant Carter gets back and hears about this, he'll shake my hand. Oh, yeah, he'll shake your hand, all right. He'll shake your hand until it comes off. Gomer, this is dynamite. I'm all set now. It won't take me but a minute to change my uniform. Gomer, you're making a mistake taking the car. What if something happens? Nothing's gonna happen. I'll be there and back before you know it. All right, that was the wrong piece of videotape, but that was the episode where uh, Sergeant Carter left his car. He went on some trip, of mm -hmm. course. You know the episode well. You were in it, and... Uh, no, I don't know the episode you don't well. Know the, you don't remember the episode? I did 150 well, of them. Well, but, I can't but remember He everything. was borrowing the car. He was borrowing yeah, Sergeant Carter's it, car, and then it, it, it fell. It fell. It fell, It crushed yes. the car. Yeah. It crushed the car. Oh, my God. <laughs> remember that? That was, yeah. Caller, go ahead. You're on the air with Ronnie Shell. Such a funny episode. Hello? Hi, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hi. Is this, who's that? Uh, this is John, and Ronnie's sitting right here. Hi. Oh, hi. How are you? Good morning. Good morning. How are you boys doing? Good. Uh, go ahead. What's your question? You're on the air. Well, I'm, I'm calling about the event. Oh. oh, yeah. Sure. You deserve tickets. Sure. Oh, <laughs> Well, thank you. I would love some tickets. Are you in, are you in uh, I, Fresno? I'm actually in Clovis. So, but yes, close by. And what is your name, ma'am? My name is Ani. Ani? Ani Eliason, yes. Uh, can you spell that? I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. I didn't hear. A-N-I. A-N-I. Okay, I'll leave these tickets at the front desk here at uh, Ventura TV. Is that okay? Okay. Yes, thank you. Great. And, you any... uh, thank you for having such great events for the Valley. Well, thank you. And uh, do you have any questions for our star here, Ronnie Shell? Ronnie, what can we expect next? Uh, on me? You mean uh, professionally? Oh, actually, yes. next week I'll be in, uh, listen, this is true, Mount Airy, North Carolina, where uh, Andy Griffith was born, and every year they have a Mayberry reunion. It's from the 21st to the 25th, and it's in Mount Airy, North Carolina, and they have, in this small town, 35,000 people come each each uh, each year, and I'll be doing a, my one-man show called Ronnie Shell Again. Mm -hmm. And um, if you're around uh, Mount Airy next week, uh, I'd like to you to be my guest. Oh, well, thank you. It's a <laughs> bit of a travel. I'm not quite as much of a traveler as you are, but uh, I would have missed it if I was in the area. Well, let me see. I'm trying to think if there's anywhere else I'll be in the area. Well, I always work Vegas so and Lake Tahoe, so if you see uh, uh, some marquees with Har at Harvey's or uh, yeah. Harris, look for my name and uh, call me, and I'll let you be my guest. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. For a nominal well, fee of $250. <laughs> the person. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, let me ask you, caller. Do you remember Ronnie Shell on Andy Griffith and uh, Gomer Pyle? She's too young. Uh, no. <laughs> Are you too young? Well, I'm not too. I'm not that young. But uh, it was it was a family event watching TV oh, in yes, the evening. Yeah. So. It was. It was a family show. Yeah. 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 Okay. So well, thank you for watching. You. Thank you. Thank you for coming. I'll see you in uh, Mount Airy next week, 21st to the 25th. 
That sounds wonderful. All Thank right. you. Have, well, pleasant have a young lady. I appreciate yes. that. No, good call. And you've got the free tickets. Uh, Ani, just come on down to Ventura TV, 3619 East Ventura Avenue in Fresno, of course. And you can pick up your tickets right here. I'm holding in my hot little hands. And I have two more to give away. 436, Me TV, Option 11. So, um... I hope we have a full house. I think we will. I think we will, too. Yeah. yeah. I know, no, you're, I I know so. you're going to be there. Yeah, why not? What else am I doing on October the That's 9th? I have nothing to do. I have no life. Oh, well, neither do I when, <laughs> I, when I'm... <laughs> no this life. is it for me. Yeah. Yeah, everybody knows I don't have a life, yeah. right? What time's the bus leave for uh, <laughs> L.A.? Vegas? You know? yeah. <laughs> no, I, I remember the last time I was here, I, I, I took a bus... Yeah. And I was quite nervous because I had never driven a Greyhound before. And so, <laughs> joke. All right, before we go to break. And uh, then I'm going to, I got a Ryan Lochte joke. Oh, okay, go ahead. You know who he is? Yeah, of course, the swimmer that lied. Yeah. He's now on Dancing with the Stars. I know. My line is, if he gets kicked off Dancing with the Stars, will he say he was robbed? <laughs> I don't know, but he might. Thank you. He Thank might. you. Thank you. Somebody tried Thank to you. tackle him the other day on the stage. Yeah, I know. I saw that? that, yeah. Wow. And I normally don't even watch that show. I, mean, I don't either. Somehow. You saw an excerpt. Yeah, I saw, well, I actually, I saw it on the internet because it, they tape it live for the East Coast. And uh -huh. then I decided, oh, well, oh, I it's going to come on at 8 o'clock here. I, I might gotcha. as well watch it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I want to see if he got tackled. <laughs> no, hey, unfor phone unfortunately he didn't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> caller, you're on with Ronnie Shell. What's your question, please? Yeah. Hey, good morning, uh, John. Good morning, Rodney. How you doing, pal? How are you? And, and uh, I was at your last show. It was pretty good. That, that was a number of years ago. Uh, I think one of them was a car show. And uh, uh, I think uh, you... Is this an episode or a live thing? No, live. It was a live. Where was that? Fresno? Was the California home. The Armenian the California home. Armenian the Armenian home. Yeah, it was last year. Okay. Yeah, I, I, that's what, right. That's right. right. Yeah, it I had a great year, time. Yes. Yeah, I thought it went pretty good. Very we, good. We had a full ha a full uh, attendance. It was I really mean, good. Good yeah. turnout. Yeah. It's a little it different. Looks, it's a little different uh, when you uh, are enclosed in a theater. Uh, there's more uh, attention to the uh, performer. So I think it, uh, if you s come to the theater October 9th, you'll see a, an updated uh, Ronnie Shell. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Would you like tickets? That'd be great. Hey, listen, is there any extra tickets? Yeah. yeah. I got them right here. We got, uh, is, this, is this Ed? Yeah, Little Eddie. A little that Eddie. Little, I thought okay. I recognized your voice. Little Eddie. Okay, I'm going to put that on. And you know where we're located, right? Right. Oh, absolutely. Okay. I'll leave them with Michelle at the front desk. How's that? Okay. Okay. Thank you, John. And thank you, Ronnie. Okay, yeah, Little Very Eddie. Much. You got I'll it. No problem. Yeah. Uh, with my camera. With my camera. Come on, we'll take a picture. Yeah. Uh, together. Together again. Together again for the first time. I, I right. tell you, I love Gomer Pyle. Uh, I love you. that episode. So did I. Thank it was you. good. Thank you for thank watching. Thank you. Okay, bye. They bought now. me a house. <laughs> and a wife. <laughs> <laughs> and two kids. Yeah, I don't want to mention this, but I know you have a lot of friends in Visalia, and we have a lot of viewers there. So, um, I didn't want to. I didn't want to. No, that's very that. good. That's very good. No, I'm glad you did, but we'll, I, we don't go into that. <laughs> I'm kidding. No, anyway, no, no, you're not your, kidding. Do your, do your. No, I'm just trying to just rub you the wrong way. Anyway, uh, no, do your impression of Sergeant Carter. I, move I it, move it, move it. I can't hear you. <laughs> that takes care of my voice for the rest of the day. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All righty. We're going to be back here on the Gomer Pyle Show. Actually, it's Connect With Me, 436, Me TV Option 11. Ronnie Shell is here. Um, he's a friend of Me TV's. He's, a, he's an icon. Gosh, darn it. He's been in Hollywood so many years. Well, let's get into gossip. Well, I want some gossip. Well, you got to ask me. Well, I, I will. I want to know who's who's doing what in Hollywood. I don't know. You, you play Vegas all the time, so I mean, what, what's going year, on twice there? Twice a year. What's going on? Is uh, is, Vegas, is, is Wayne Newton still there? Yes. In fact, I, I think he opened uh, last week, his 50th anniversary or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Frank I, is not there anymore, is who? he? Who? Frank. Frank passed away. Sinatra. You've gotta, yeah, Sinatra. You, you've got to. You've got to. <laughs> I got to get up with the times. Get up right? with the times. Yeah. <laughs> right. Sammy Davis. He's not there anymore. I either, worked right? with him twice in Hawaii. Did you? Wonderful guy. He's gone. 
Yeah, I know. What what year? I don't know. Do you know, I don't, I don't know. know. All I these people know. are gone. It's Everybody's amazing. gone. They're, Dean Martin's gone. Oh, I love uh, Dean Martin. Jackie Gleason's gone. Jackie Gleason's uh, gone. Did you ever work with Jackie Gleason by the No, I worked with Rickles many times. He's still around. Yeah, I know. He, Don Rickles. Yeah. Tell He's, me about Rickles real quick. I love him. Can. Oh, he was, he did Gomer Pyle. But before that, before he did Gomer Pyle, uh, we worked a club together in Hollywood called the... Uh, I can't think of the name of it, but it was on La Cienega Boulevard, and I was, next to Don, I was the most uh, uh, popular comic there at the time. I was just starting in the business, and uh, and then he did Gomer Pyle, and then after that he did uh, two episodes of, uh, of uh, the Jim Neighbors Hour, and uh, we became very close. He's now 89. He works from a wheelchair, but he still is He's still... As funny, yes, fresh as ever. Yeah. yeah. Good guy, yeah. good guy. I know they, he's got that reputation, of, but he he's a good guy. Yeah. In fact, let me tell you a, a story. Yeah. And it's it's. If, do I have time? Yeah, of course. Uh, we were really close friends, and so I hadn't seen him for a while. So, uh, in the meantime, I got married to a lovely lady, really nice. We're still married, forty eight years, but uh, we were walk. We, 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 were, we went out to see Don. He had a one-man show in, um, out, out in the San Fernando Valley. And after the show was over, I thought, I don't want to bother him, so I won't even. So I'm standing in the hallway, and Don comes up. And I said, Don, it's Ronnie Shell. Yeah, hi, how you doing, Ronnie? I said, I want you to meet my wife. This is Janet. He took a look at her and said, yeah, about a C plus, and walked away. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, he lost Jan, but I laughed my tail off. What did your wife say when he said that? You know, I don't remember because I was laughing so hard, but uh, she's not a fan of his she doesn't professionally. Like, she doesn't like Don Rickles. She, well, she, uh, we have a different sense of humor. Uh, yeah. Mine is from the streets, and hers is more intellectual. Well, well, and, and so quickly, before we go to break here, sure. we're past time, but uh, secret to 48 years of marriage is what? <laughs> Tell me, because I have no idea. Well, let me think about it, and I'll, I'll answer that after the break. Um, yeah, because I was married, married 10 years, and boom, it flushed down the toilet. Well, I, I, see, here's the secret. <laughs> I've been married 48 years, yeah. 12 of the happiest years of my life. <laughs> That's the answer. Stick with it. Were, I knew you were going to say that. For some <laughs> reason, I knew you were going to say that. 436, me TV Option 11, back after this from Charles Chuck McGill. The new Frigidaire Professional line at Ventura TV Video Appliance. Enjoy generous sized cooktops and saute or simmer with ease, while true convection ovens offer even baking and juicy roasting perfection. Foods stay their freshest in spacious refrigerators with convenient controls and clear filtered ice and water. Easy to clean surfaces reduce fingerprints and the quietest of dishwashers makes cleanup a snap. The new Frigidaire Professional line at Ventura TV Video Appliance. Have you or a loved one recently been arrested for a serious crime? Is your professional reputation at risk? Aggressive representation from a qualified defense attorney can help you avoid conviction and keep your reputation untarnished. Hi, I'm Charles McGill, and I'll fight for your rights. With extensive experience in successfully defending against a wide range of criminal offenses and high-profile cases, you can rest assured that you'll get the fair trial you deserve from McGill Guzman McGill. Call us at 559-255-3425 or visit us online at toplawyersfresno.com. I take it things didn't work out exactly the way you'd planned, Slater. <laughs> it never fails. When you over-anticipate, you're bound to be disappointed. Thanks a lot, Hummel. Didn't you get to see that Watusi dancer? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I saw her. Well, what happened? She invited me home to meet her family. Oh, that sounds very nice. Her husband and two kids? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I even bother going into town. I could have more fun doing my laundry. <laughs> Boy, have I got something to tell you. Well, you hear this. You know that Hollywood tour I went on? Well, I had one of the best times I've ever had in my whole life. Guess who I spent the afternoon with? Come on, guess. I don't know, Gomer. You'll never guess in a million years, but guess anyway. I give up. You'll never guess. <laughs> Gomer, I give up. Okay, then I'll tell you. I spent the whole afternoon with Tina Tracy. What do you think about that? How long did it take you to think that one up? She is, without a doubt, one of the nicest, sweetest girls I ever met in my whole life. Right away, she offered me this nice, oh, tall drink. Oh, oh, oh. You mean you don't believe me? 
Comer, I'm not in the mood for jokes. Can you knock it off? But this is no joke, do you, Garnies? And I've saved the best part for last. She told me to come back tomorrow for a barbecue, and I could ask a few of my buddies. Oh, sure, sure. And she'll fill the pool with champagne for swimming. You mean you don't believe me? Gomer, it's just a little far-fetched. Just a little. Well, I'm surprised at you, Duke. I really am. You're supposed to be my best friend. Have I ever told you a fib my whole life? No, but there's always a first time. Well, I'll tell you exactly. I got off of this tour bus to take a picture of Tina Tracy's house, and there she was. And she is, without a doubt, one of the nicest... You sweetest. really met her? You really met her? I'm surprised at you, Duke. If I said I did, I did. Well, I mean, it's just like a thing like that happens to a serviceman like once in a thousand times, and who'd ever figure you to be so lucky? All right, the episode on Gomer Pyle, USMC, and that's where Gomer, of course, explaining to Duke Slater, the private, that, uh, you know, he had afternoon lunch with a Hollywood star, yeah. and you just weren't buying it. Well, no, you know, I, mean, I didn't believe it. No, but... but well, yeah, I, I had my episode. This, Go ahead. I gotta say this. But, you know, and we do have a caller. Caller, hang on a second. You know, back then, and this is just my opinion, I mean, that that's terrific acting by both well, of you. Well, it, thank it, you. That was acting back in those days. Not that it's not that, you know, in this day and age. Everything but, is one-liners now, right? Yeah, you had joke. To, Everybody you had has to a joke, yeah. Back then. Yeah. That's true. I'm not going to I'm not going to I don't it, argue so with you on is that, that. Is that something you had to learn or is that is that well, just I, natural for you? I don't I guess it was natural cuz I never went to drama school or anything like that. You didn't? No, I I studied uh, drama at uh, that sounds like a lie. I studied drama at San Francisco State, and I was in okay. four or five plays. And so I learned there that one rule, don't try to be funny. Be natural, and if the script is funny, that will that will be the, oh, the laughs. That was the golden rule. That was the golden rule, yeah. Okay, we'll push this just a little oh, closer. Sure. Sorry. Uh, caller, uh, you're on the air with Ronnie Shell. Go ahead, sir. Or is Hello, it? John, and hi, Ron. Uh, hi, pal. Ronnie, uh, great to see a Hollywood uh, actor on the show. I've always uh, loved to watch this show, and um, this is a treat. Question: Two questions for you. One regarding your your career as an actor, and uh, the other regarding your career as a comedian. Um, regarding the acting, uh, and I was a fan of, and still am, of Gomer Pyle, and um, a lot of those old shows. Thank um, you. A little bit before my time, but I, I, I still enjoy them. Uh, you had to say that, didn't what? you? No, I'm, I'm kidding. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, and, and I also was, while I was watching the show, I was looking online, and I saw that you've been in some more contemporary shows like Jesse. My kids watch that show. Yeah, I was on the first episode of Jesse. So what, what being uh, an actor that's been spanned a, a, a number of generations, what do you see that's changed over the years? Um, is that so? I guess that's my main question. Okay. What do you see in uh, TV production and show production that's different, or does it affect you as an actor? Well, um, today uh, the accent is on youth, and a lot of the things that I did early on, <clears throat> especially voiceovers, because uh, I did a lot of cartoons and uh, commercials, radio commercials, and I went to uh, the, I. Coincidentally, I went to my agent a, a, a couple of weeks ago, and a girl, a lady, and I said, Arlene, has my voice changed in the last 30 years? She said, no. Am I still sounding youthful? She said, yes. I said, well, then when I go up for a commercial for a 19-year-old, why can't I get it? She said, because the minute you walk in the door and they see your gray hair, it's over. So there is age discrimination, if that helps to answer really? your question yeah even today even today was then in a tape huh um, versus walking in would that benefit you think say it again if you were to send in an audio so they didn't they yes, didn't but, but, necessarily uh, make the, that the bad yes you're absolutely that's what i thought but the the downside of that is that a lot of people know me and, and the minute they say oh here's ronnie shell no he's too old so they go for they don't even listen to my voice they go for uh, a young uh, not too long ago, I was in a, a, a Japanese-American uh, cartoon, 150 episodes, called Battle of the Planets, and I was on with Casey Kasem. Oh. This is like 20 years ago. Okay. And I played an 18-year-old for 150 episodes. So, wow. Wow. you know, I, I don't, I don't know what it is. But fortunately, if you if you Casey play your Kasem cards right, some uh, medical issues, I believe. Who? 
Yeah, toward the end. That was toward much the later. Yeah, yeah, toward the end. That was yeah. much later. Yeah. Yeah. He, he was did. a good but guy. I never heard of that. I, I didn't know that you had played uh, at such. By the way. It was a Japanese cartoon that we uh, turned into American dialogue. And so we did 150 episodes. It was Alan Young. Remember who missed, uh, the actor who did uh, A Horse is a Horse? Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah and yeah. Uh, a couple other. We had guest stars. By the way, in 1964, there was a gentleman here in Fresno who had you on uh, a program, a local television program. 1964, his name is Gary Coca-Cola. Name and, sure sounds familiar. Uh, yeah, well, he told me to tell you in a text right here. He says, uh, tell Ronnie I said hello. Is he still um, in the business? He still is. In fact, he has uh, a lot to do with this television program, uh, Connect With Me and Me TV Fresno. He helped launch this with our guy, Mark Sheeran, upstairs, who owns this, this place. So Gary texted me and says, tell Ronnie I said hello, and he'd like a t contact number for you because he wants to get in touch with you. All right, you can 1964. It. Yeah. Yeah, you know, on KLT, K A I L T V, which is Will still on the air today. Will you tell him to come October 9th to the? Yeah. No, I'll let him know. Theater and see, yeah, see yeah, because he's watching right now. Yeah. So, well, come on. It's been a long time. Come on, and we'll uh, we'll chat about the old days. Yeah, and so what we'll do? Okay, let's take another phone call. That's what we're gonna do. Uh, then I'm gonna tell you about Goldie Hawn. Good morning. Uh, you're on Connect with me. I'd like to hear that. You're on the air with Ronnie Shell. Go ahead. Uh, Ronnie, let me ask you a question uh, of the comedians. Sure. Of, of all the female comedians, do you think that Carol Burnett was the best as, I mean, they they did a lot of ad lib where they didn't look at the scripts, you know. They Whatever came out of them was funny, you know, even even their uh, co-stars or whatever, you know. And as far as Gomer Pyle, I thought he was, he was funny from the beginning with, you know, Andy and Mayberry and whatnot, you know. Mm -hmm. But I believe, and, and tell me if it's true or not, that Carol Burnett is probably the funniest female uh, actress uh, because it just you fits Carol her Burnett? being herself. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what do you say? Well, yes, I, I agree with you. There, there were some contemporaries of hers that were very good, but uh, as far as, I, I worked uh, her only engagement in Las Vegas, Caesar's Palace. I opened for her, and she... Uh, she did an act. She was very funny. And the key to her, not only was she funny and very good at sketch it, but she was likable. And that's very important. Oh, yeah. Especially, unfortunately, for female. They, they should be likable. Uh, uh, Phyllis Stiller was likable. Uh, there was a lot of them that were, that were very funny, but the funniest ones were the likable ones. Yeah. Now you said you had a good friendship with Harvey Corman too. He was my best friend in yeah. Hollywood, and uh, <laughs> he was a neurotic. Yeah. Uh, by the way, that's another thing. I you show me a comedian who is funny, and I will show you a neurotic person. I have never met a well-adjusted comedian, and I can go right down the line. Robin Williams. I did the only. Mork and uh, you did Mork and Mindy. Yeah, I just I, I, he I did, did Mork and Mindy. Yeah. I did the one hour, the only one hour show they ever did. With uh, I was up in a balloon with him for two weeks, and he was he what, was he was uh, a so gen he was a genius. Tell me genius. about him because I, I tell you we're know, very he's, shy, he's a, okay. except when uh, I mean in person. He's very in person, shy. very shy. Was okay. Yeah, I know he passed yeah. away obviously, uh, but, um, and uh, he. Uh, but when he was on, he was hysterically funny. Harvey was probably the best sketch comedian in the business, as far as I'm, I'm concerned. Did you ever see Blazing Saddles yes. when he played Hedley yes. Lamar? Yes. Genius. But he was screwed up, like all comedians. In fact, on the day that Blazing Saddles opened up, we had coffee. And he, that was during the Carol Burnett show. And he was, you know, they were number one. And he was... Uh, coming out in Blazing Saddles, and I said, Harvey, are you now happy? And he said, I'm miserable. Who, who was this? this Harvey. Was Harvey? Yeah. And he okay. was coming out with a movie and a top Carol Burnett show, and it was just... But he was miserable. He's, he was, no, well, no more miserable than any other genius comic. Every... And did he say why he was miserable? Well, was his personal life in shambles? No, or? he had a very happy uh, marriage, but uh, 
it's all secret stuff. I can't tell you. Yeah, no, I understand. You know, I understand. I understand. But he was the, just and the same with Robin Williams, huh? Just kind oh, of. Oh yeah, look what happened there. Yeah, I know. But when you work with him, there was it was, there there was any sign. No of... sign of, of, of unhappiness or thing like that. He was. Uh, he but was totally neurotic. Totally neurotic. Yeah. George Carlin was a friend of mine, and he was neurotic. Neurotic. Well, name him. You name him. Go down the line. Okay. Uh, you mentioned Don Rickles, neurotic. Uh, how about uh, George Wallace, one of my favorite comedians? Oh, I never knew George that well. Okay. So I, don't, right. I can't comment I'm trying to think that. of some other comedians, and I'm, I can't think right now. Uh, Dom DeLuise. Love Dom DeLuise. Neurotic? He, crazy. Well, yeah. you know, he had the eating problem right to the end. I mean, he was very, very Ate funny. himself to death, huh? Ate himself to death, yeah. Literally. Literally. Yeah. Yeah. Who's the funniest guy you ever met? Or funniest comedian. Present uh, company be, excluded? Uh, yes. Yeah. Could it could it be? Could it be? Could it be Carol Burnett? Could it be Ronnie Shell? Could it be <laughs> <laughs> No. Who, who? I I really think the person who makes me laugh the two people that make me laugh the most contemporary. Well, no one's gone. Harvey Corman. Okay. Because he's so neurotic and so Tim hypo, Conway, you work with Tim Conway. I loved him, yeah. Tim, Tim is uh, still around, and uh, he was up there in, in the top genius, and uh, he, uh, <laughs> he and Harvey were friends. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that well, you know that they worked together, but uh, I had another one, but I couldn't think of one. It's okay. Is that all right? Yeah, we'll go to break. We'll. Am think I still of it. on? You're still on. Okay. Are, are we, is, this, is this mic working? Hello, testing. One, two, three. Tasting, one, two. Uh, yes, uh, 436, meet TV option. I we still got more time left with Ronnie. Shell oh, the back. Goldie Hawn. Oh, Goldie Hawn. You'll tell the Goldie Hawn story when we get back. And uh, her uh, her husband, she's still married, right? No. They're not married? Anymore? Not according to the Enquirer. I don't read the Enquirer. I did his first movie, Strong, uh, Strongest Man in the World, Kurt Russell. Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful guy. And a great athlete. But they're divorced? They never got married. But they're not together anymore. That's what the Enquirer says. I don't know. I haven't talked to her lately, and I haven't talked to him lately. Can you get her on the phone? No, I'm just kidding. 436 means Get TV information. See if, it's, see if she's listening. <laughs> Back in just a moment after this from Charles Chuck McGill. <laughs> You can find movies on Over the Air Channel 13.3. Movies. Our name says it all. Have you or a loved one recently been arrested for a serious crime? Is your professional reputation at risk? Aggressive representation from a qualified defense attorney can help you avoid conviction and keep your reputation untarnished. Hi, I'm Charles McGill, and I'll fight for your rights. With extensive experience in successfully defending against a wide range of criminal offenses and high-profile cases, you can rest assured that you'll get the fair trial you deserve from McGill Guzman McGill. Call us at 559-255-3425 or visit us online at toplawyersfresno.com. from San Francisco, California. Anybody here from San Francisco? Huh? Yeah. Could I get a lift home after the show? <laughs> Actually, I'm from Richmond, California. You know Richmond? Richmond, California is right near San Francisco. It's probably the toughest town in all of Northern California. I can say that because I was born and raised there. And I come from Richmond High. Richmond High, I don't know what it's like now, but when I went there, it was one of the toughest high schools in all of California, really. I remember one guy got kicked out of shop class for picking his nose with a Black & Decker power tool. <laughs> Of course, I wasn't one of the tougher guys, so I was, I was sort of a loner. I, was, I wasn't a sissy, I was just always by myself. In fact, I was very lonely. In fact, when I used to play basketball, I used to play none on one. <laughs> but I, I'm, I'm glad to be here, because I'm actually here for friendship. I, you know, I, I really don't need the money. I make so much money on commercials and movies and things like that, that I just do this for fun. In fact, I now have a home on both coasts, one in Tijuana, one in Newark. <laughs> Excuse me while I sit down here, folks, because I, uh, 
I fractured my hip in uh, April. Any of you guys watch the Merv Griffin or the uh, Mike Douglas shows? You might have seen me. I, I was on the show a couple of months ago in crutches. What happened was I, I fractured my hip. How it happened was, this is true, I was jogging. I don't know how many of you jog, but I was jogging, and uh, I, want, I was on a rate reduction program. I wanted to lose weight, so I thought I'd keep jogging until I went down to my original weight, seven pounds and four ounces. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> well, I either got it... No, cool it, cool it. Either, I either got it jogging, or I might have gotten it uh, nude surfing. I don't know how many of you, but I surf in the nude. We do that a lot out here in Santa Monica. We call it hang two. <laughs> And anyway, <laughs> anyway, so I went to this doctor, see, this orthopedic surgeon. Those are the ones that work on the bones. This is true. And I said, listen, I got a hurt here. And he said, yes, have you ever had that before? And I said, yes. And he said, well, you got it again. <laughs> well, he said, he took an x-ray and he said, well, you've got a broken hip there. Well, you're going to have to have an operation. Well, that scared me a little bit. So uh, but I wanted to get a second opinion because I didn't value his opinion very much. I got his number from Leon Spink's dentist. <laughs> So I got a second opinion, and I didn't value his opinion either. I got his number from the pra plastic surgeon who did Carl Malden's nose. <laughs> and my teeth. <laughs> and anyway, so I finally went to the hospital, and it was wild. I don't know if you've ever had an operation, but, you know, I got a 10-inch scar here now, and, and the, a guy comes in, you know, they tell you what they're going to do, and then a guy comes in and shaves you, starts shaving me from my knee all the way up to my hip. Oh, just shaved it all clean for a little 10-inch scar, you know, and then he started shaving over, you know. <laughs> the private there. Finally, he looked up at me. Truth. He was shaving away and he looked up at me and said, listen, can you do this? <laughs> okay, what year was that? I don't do you, know. Do you have any idea? Was that like the 80s, maybe? Or? I, I have no idea. I, I really don't know. Yeah. I, I just... You look the same, I'm, though. I'm gonna, oh, come on. You look the same. Well, thank you. I, I, got a, I have uh, some new material now from that. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, that that I would forgotten it on about. Me. Spring it on me. Go ahead. No, or, I'm going to use it. Uh, you just saw it. <laughs> I hadn't done that in about 20 years. No, do, you have, do, you have, do you have an updated version of that? I thought that's yes. what you meant. Yes. Oh, you do. April, uh, uh, October, October 9th. October the 9th. 9th, <laughs> yeah. You'll come and see it. <laughs> You'll have to go to Bullard High School Theater to see the updated version of that. October and so, 9th. Right. You know, we got some email questions. Did Ronnie have fun on the set of the love boat well how could you not have fun? yes yes yeah i mean that, yes i uh, they were all very nice to me very much yeah how yeah. many how many shows there did you do with them one just one that's all okay <laughs> is that all right no i'm not going to go any further all right okay. okay can ronnie share another rickle story <laughs> that's another email question well you know i can it's a little long but i could how much time do we have boys and girls huh we have, you time? have time okay this is actually a, a secondary story from... Uh, do, you mind, uh, do you mind if we take a call? And no, take a call instead. Okay, because we don't... I, I don't, don't know. Care. I don't Unknown care. caller. Okay. okay. Uh, good morning. You're on Connect With Me with uh, Ronnie Shell. Go ahead. Yes, uh, I have a couple of questions. Sure. Uh, have you been approached uh, about ideas, and, and can you do something about uh, maybe produce something like that, or... A talk show or a comedian show, uh, I Love Lucy or Carol Burnett or something. Uh, I thank you for you could, uh, that. No, actually, I very, very uh, early in my career, I started taking photographs of every single person I worked with, big names. And uh, recently, a guy, uh, a publisher, came up to me and said, Why don't you put those together with a story about each person? And make an a, a biography, autobiography about it, and I'm, I'm I'm thinking about doing that. I had worked with all these people. Only two people turned me down in my history of. Uh, who, who were they? I knew you'd ask that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to know who the bad guys were. I will tell you, <laughs> Helen Reddy. Really? And I thought she had a great voice, but not friendly at all. And uh, that's a shock. Then, wow. And Diana Ross. You're kidding. Not too friendly. Ooh. But wow. I like I like both of them because I, talent. I listen, I haven't done anything compared to you, but I did get the opportunity back in the late seventies when remember the Sahara at Tahoe? Yeah. Back in the late seventies. She on. appeared there. With me. Yeah, okay. I interviewed her mm -hmm. once way Is back. Is it Diana then. Ross or Helen Diana Reddy? Diana Ross. Okay, was and she friendly? She was very friendly, and I'm shocked to hear you say that. That's why I'm Well, maybe I just I caught her on a bad night. night. Like, yeah, maybe. it's a possibility, but wow. 
I just why asked. would they turn a nice guy like the, you, uh, you down? I mean, I don't know. Jealousy. <laughs> Jealousy. That's right. It, that's the only answer. I, caller, do you have any other questions? Is caller there or gone. gone? Okay, the caller is gone. Anyway, you were talking about what Goldie was Hawn. Oh, oh, Goldie Hawn and another Rickles story. You have time? Yeah. Goldie Hawn first. Which one? I, Okay, Goldie this is Hans a true story. Here. Okay. So is a Rickle story, but this is... Okay, go ahead. Uh, four minutes. We have four Okay, minutes. I'll do it this fast. I worked, uh, after I left Gomer Pyle, because I thought I'd be a big star by myself, I did a show, 27 episodes of a show called Good Morning World with uh, Goldie Hawn. She played my girlfriend, and she'd done nothing other than... Uh, uh, she was a, a go-go dancer out of Baltimore, and she was... So I was sort of her mentor, and we were both single, and uh, we rehearsed at my house, uh, my apartment in Burbank every single night, and uh, after, wow. after, you do, wow. the, you do the math, okay? <laughs> no, I'm, wow. I'm kidding. I'm I have kidding. a dirty mind. I'm kidding, I? Kurt. <laughs> I have a dirty mind. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's not true. We were, no, she was too skinny. Anyway, okay. <laughs> we, we finished, uh, one night we finished, and she never liked to rehearse. <laughs> and finally, I said, Goldie, you're never going to make it as an actress. Hang on, caller. You're never going to make it as an actress because you won't rehearse. Look at me. I've been three years. I'm a star, and you're not going to make it. Two years later, she won the Academy Award for Cactus Flower, and I found out while working some toilet in <laughs> Omaha. That's my Goldie Hawn story. Did she call you and say, hey, Ronnie? No, but we've remained friends. We've remained friends, and Kurt, okay. too. Call her. Uh, go ahead. You're on the air. Short on time, though. Short on time. Mr. Shell, glad yes. you finally got a chance to tell the Goldie Hawn story. <laughs> you have been uh, somebody that walks onto the screen, and you brighten it up, and I oh. thank you. God bless you. I appreciate what you do, and I wish you the very best. Well, thank you. Please come and see, see me October 9th, if you can. Yeah. You in Fresno? Theater. You in Fresno? Isn't that the yes. That's a Saturday, right? No, a Sunday. Sunday at 1 o'clock. Okay. Then the 9th. Yeah, the 9th at, what's the name All of the right. theater? Bullard High School Theater. Bullard High School Theater. I know it well. Okay, pal. Again. We'll see you. Bring your not friends. Safe. Do not mean you do brighten up the screen when you walk on. Thank you, pal. He's right. Bye-bye. Come back and see me. The caller is right. You really do. You always have. You've you got don't this. Uh, like, take that tight shot of Ronnie. Look at that. I mean, it's just, he's just a natural. Oh, wow. uh, look into the camera there. It's just, look at that. Hi, I mean, fans. How, that's a Hi, Hollywood fans. star right there. Can I? Uh, you have a star on the Walk of Fame, by the way? No. You, you I, don't want, I don't want to pay for it. You, <laughs> you have to pay for it. You have to pay for it. You, you don't Like $5,000 and anybody can get one. Are you no check into check into that you have to pay to get a hollywood is that on the true fame. yes 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 yeah do you want to hear my rickles story or do we have yeah. time uh two, how much time two minutes that's, that's, two minutes okay two i'll minutes. do it fast do it bob fast. newhart told me this story uh, rickles was working the sahara in the lounge and bob newhart wanted to take his wife uh to see him and he said now i warn you he's he might really tear into us so be careful <laughs> and she said okay so they went they sat there and while just before he goes on uh bob looks over and he's there's a guy sitting in the corner with a huge divot is that the word yeah in divot. His, yeah that really de unfortunately deformed his face so i thought so uh, bob says oh he's gonna destroy him so <laughs> out comes rickles he does he does his act for an hour and a half uh, about an hour and a half doesn't mention this guy. So at the end, so Bob's, ah, yeah, yeah. And so at the end, uh, Rickles started to walk out, and he walked past this guy with a divot, and he said, thank you, it's been a great, great being here today. And by the way, don't worry, nobody notices, and walks out. <laughs> <laughs> That's the story. I've got to wrap it up, but I don't know what else to say other than thank you, and it was a pleasure meeting well, you. Well, thank you. I and, hope you'll uh, come October 9th and see us. I will try my Come friend. Come backstage. You're, you're, and we'll listen, chat. you're an icon, and you, you really do brighten up the screen. Oh, thank you, John. You really do. Thank and, you. Uh, so do you. Well, I don't, not like you, though. <laughs> uh, you never <laughs> you know. You really do. You never know. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate your time. Thank, thank you for you. stopping by. Ronnie Good to be Shell, here. the one and only Gomer Pyle, seen right here every Monday through Friday on MeTV Fresno, 5 a.m., and again at 5 30. See you back tomorrow with another edition of Connect With Me. I think.
Have you or a loved one recently been arrested for a serious crime? Is your professional reputation at risk? Aggressive representation from a qualified defense attorney can help you avoid conviction.